Again. Now on paragraph two. It's an explanation uh, to uh, Councillor Tracy. Uh, we, were we were misinformed by the administration about the order of those paragraphs. Thank you. Paragraph two for information. Shared services with Richmond. Reference up, Madam Mayor, so therefore a vote will be necessary. Okay. There is a reference amendment relating to this paragraph. I set out on page 50 of the supplementary agenda. Can I ask Councillor Osborne to move and Councillor Daly to second the amendment? I move, please, Madam Mayor. Formally seconded. Speakers? Who wishes to speak first? Councillor Amber. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My qualification to talk on this subject are that I qualified as a child care social worker back in 1971. I spent over 30 years working with vulnerable children and adults up to the early 2000s in social work as a manager and in director positions. And I worked in eight different local authorities led by politicians from all the main political parties. The responsibilities under the Children Act for vulnerable children are particularly onerous on staff and on the local authority. It takes great skill and effective management for all concerned to deliver services for children looked after and in care, to children in need, and services for child protection and safeguarding. Good children's services also need strong political leadership, and in the best authorities there is cross-party agreement and lack of political game playing over these issues. One prerequisite for this is absolute openness and transparency in which members are meticulously briefed on all the detail. I am really sorry that this appears not to have happened in this case. There are many, many unanswered questions. So what's happened? Our problem tonight is that we don't know much of the detail. It appears that we've had a critical Ofsted, and that's been confirmed with what the Cabinet member and leader have said tonight, and that we might be downgraded, as I quote, because of weaknesses identified in certain services. From my experience of inspections, Ofsted have verbally briefed senior officers before Christmas when they finished the field work, and they may even now have shared a draft report in confidence. I don't know. It appears that the Council are being asked to take urgent political action regarding the senior management of children's services and of adult care services before formally receiving the Ofsted report. So why have these urgent matters not been taken before the relevant overview and scrutiny committees for children's and for adults, held in private if necessary, but they've not? At the very least, members should have been briefed on what the certain services were and the particular weaknesses were, as Councillor Belton was saying earlier, but they were not. The report on this was hidden away in a report entitled Shared Services with Richmond at the Finance and Corporate Resources Committee, and even the word Ofsted was not included in the committee paper, although the Chief Executive made it clear at the committee meeting that the proposed action was in response to Ofsted findings of weakness, but there was no clarity of detail and no transparency. Now, members are being asked to make a decision without the available facts. We have no clear idea what the problems are in children's services that need to be addressed. So we have no idea if the solution proposed would appropriately address the identified weaknesses. This is not a responsible way to spend half a million pounds, and this is not a responsible way to run vital services. In short, there are too many unanswered questions. So why were the two OSCs sidelines? They might have clarified some of the unanswered questions. What are the weaknesses identified in the certain services? Why would the council not be wise to wait a month before taking these decisions when the Ofsted report would be available? Why are the solutions proposed only for 14 months? Is it wise to have such a short-term perspective with the uncertainty that that may cause and possible further senior management reorganization? Why is there an extra layer of deputy director being inserted in the management structure that we only recently agreed ourselves? So in conclusion, I'm left wondering whether these proposals may be the right ones or whether they may not be. I don't know. All members should think very carefully before voting for major and costly changes 
without being able to assess the evidence and hear the full facts. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Tracy. Are there no other speakers? Yes, there are. Yes, yes. ten minutes from Mr Grimston, from Councillor Grimston. Councillor Oh, and Councillor Critchard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm also going to talk okay. about this and take a slightly different tack. I think I need to remind everybody in this chamber about our key responsibility. All councillors and council officials share corporate parenting responsibility and cannot abdicate it. That's everyone in this chamber, you and I. This is our most important role. It's more important than keeping the council tax low. It's to act as the best possible parents we can to children in our care. We know Wandsworth has fallen short in this duty. We, well certainly the opposition, and I would guess from what has been said, members on the opposite benches, don't know exactly what the problem is, but we do know that the executive and the officers are rushing to make changes, a top level reorgan a management reorganisation costing half a million pounds. That's the execs and officers response. And my response? I ask myself, how best can I help these children, children that I don't necessarily know, but I need to protect as if they were my own. And I think I can do this best by challenging the exec and the officers to make sure these issues are properly discussed and properly resolved. And I also believe that the issues are broader than just children's services. This council has relentlessly pushed through a major merger with Richmond. This council has not properly reviewed the risks when managers are too busy developing new structures for the organisations and running their departments. This council has failed to publish a risk assessment for the merger and clearly failed to notice any possible risk to children's services. And I'm also very sure, and even more sure from what I've heard tonight, that this council was too proud to talk to other local authorities about their Ofsted experiences and learn from them. These are all major organisational failings. Overstretched officers, no risk assessments, failure to learn from others, and I would also add to that complacency and achievements. I suggest that before rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, the Council has an in-depth cross-party review of the Ofsted report to identify improvements and looks at how its fixation on a merger have meant that our children have not received the service they deserve and how we, as their corporate parents, have failed them. Councillor Grimston, who's requested 10 minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I don't think I'll speak for that uh, period of time, given the uh, uh, quality and, and, and very good debate I think we've had so far this evening. Um, I would start by saying you know, I, I, I do like some of the traditions of this chamber, but one of those which has grown up in recent years uh, where any level of, of challenge or, or scrutiny that's offered by the opposition is met by a kind of knee-jerk response that it's either playing politics or attacking the officers is one of the less attractive ones. I was chatting with Councillor Cousins uh, yesterday and we had a little sort of question as to whether anybody in the majority group would actually go so far as parodying that scene in the Titanic whereas this massive supposedly unsinkable ship sank lower and lower below the waves. There was a period of that woman running from side to side saying, the children, the children, it's all about protecting the children. We decided that that wouldn't happen because it was too much of a parody. It just shows how much we know. Um, but, but having said that, Mr. Mayor, I would say that, that certainly our view is that there is very, very little merit uh, in, in, uh, on occasion like this of trying to ascribe blame to any uh, individual on the officer or indeed on the, on the member uh, level. Um, our view, and Councilor Mrs. Tracy and I don't always see eye to eye, we've had an example of it tonight and she may not be very comfortable with me saying this, but I would say that our view is that she is clearly by some way the most able member of the current cabinet. She is someone who has passionately uh, put forward the interests of children looked after and proactively so for a long, long time and has organised uh, events which I've been to where she has helped to educate us on that. Uh, and that uh, is absolutely unquestioned. Uh, and uh, certainly I know as a, a person of honour she will have thought about her position, but certainly our view here uh, is that it would be absolutely the wrong thing if she were to consider resignation uh, at this point because I don't think there is anyone in a better position or with better talents to deal with this. But having said that, Mr Mayor, we have to recognise that this council has now joined councils like Doncaster, like Rotherham, 
like Sunderland, like Haringey, in requiring external intervention to protect the most vulnerable youngsters in our uh, community. Uh, and that is, uh, is such an extraordinary thing to think of for those of us who have been around a while, that it quite clearly cannot be something which can be ascribed to any individual or to any, as I say, be that a, a, a member of the, uh, the officers or, or of the, the members of this council. It does surely speak to a far deeper uh, systematic and, and cultural uh, issue, which we as a council must, I think, take extremely uh, seriously. Uh, the point has been made, and I think we should go back to it, is just reflect on the speed of change that we've seen the organisation uh, of Wandsworth Council uh, undergo over the course of this. I was interested to, in, in the leader's statement about not doing things with undue haste, and yet we have, ha after one enormous, extraordinary reorganisation, which has seen us go from seven departments in effect to three in a very short period of time, my own view is that what we're seeing at the moment, it happens to be in children looked after, it could have been almost in any department uh, here, is the thing that happens in almost any circum uh, circumstance where an organisation is changing this rapidly, that something is bound to go wrong in, the, in there. And for me, I think the big message that we really must take on board is that before the previous reorganisation has yet had a chance to settle down, and this is evidence of that, we're now going to under something which is just as radical, which the paper itself accepts is certainly at the uh, extreme end of, the, of, of such reorganizations that have been carried out so far, uh, and is being done in an extraordinarily short time scale yet again. Uh, and it, yet the paper has not a single word in there. It's very much the point that Councillor Critchow was making. There's not a single point in there about a strategy for reputational management for this council. This will inevitably seriously affect the reputation of this council with our residents. So will the next example, which will happen, and the one after that, because all these organisations always have those kinds of, of, of things in them. And frankly, uh, I don't think it's, it's right that uh, there is a, has been formal, uh, informal verbal uh, reporting back from Ofsted. It would have been possible to give members of this council some sort of steer as to why 500,000 is the right figure rather than a million or 200,000 when it looks to looking at the amount we have taken out of our central uh, 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 capacity as an organisation, which is too much to uh, uh, sustain the level of service which we wish to do. Uh, and uh, uh, frankly, either backbenchers of the majority group have been given information about that that the rest of us have, have not, and that's a pretty disgraceful thing. All backbenchers of the majority group are going to be asked to vote for something without any basis on which to decide whether it's the right thing to do. And that is equally disgraceful. Neither of those two possibilities, and they are the only two possibilities, can possibly be put forward as a better way of running this council than in some way having the debate behind closed doors. Absolutely, I think that should have been essential, and that's very easy to do given the regula regulation. But will give us something more to go on for the sort of decision which we're being asked to, to talk about here. But there are plenty of examples out there. And again, one of the cultural things that's been mentioned again tonight is the, the, the absolutely uh, uh, determined way never to look at what's going on in other authorities. We had the example of Brent Council. We've had the example of Somerset County, of Mendip District. Organisations which have followed the line of saying we can totally rip out the central... Uh, management of the council because of course that is backroom and backroom doesn't affect frontline services. Well what we're talking about tonight absolutely shouts the folly of that uh, position. It seems to me absolutely clear and indeed this paper tells us that the figure by which we've done this is half a million but we have already taken more out of the central uh, uh, administration, the central uh, senior management of this organization too quickly for us to be able to do this. And I have to disagree with those members of the other side who are still saying that this is responsible financial management when it results in outcomes of this sort of nature. We are not a commercial organization. We are not judged by the bottom line. We're judged by the quality of the service we give to our communities. And on that basis, I think it is extremely questionable as to whether this does actually represent uh, sound financial uh, management when it, when it comes down to it. In effect, Mr. Mayor, I think there are two questions here. One of them for us is, the, the high level one is, how did we as members get into a position that we thought we were so much better than we clearly are at the moment? Uh, but underneath that, I think, there's, there's a more detailed question, which I think, we, again, we do need to get in touch with. So there are two broad possibilities here. Either 
The uh, issue which we're now seeing in, in uh, uh, children looked after uh, has deteriorated very significantly in the course of the last three years or so while the major reorganization has been going on. If I had to put money on it now, I think that was, uh, that was the most likely one. As I say, that's in no way a criticism of any individual. It is a criticism of being unrealistic about the speed at which we could do something of this nature. But the other alternative, uh, if, if that's not the case, um, is that actually we've never been as good as we thought we were. If we go back to, and, and I'm quite happy to stand up and put my hands up as Councillor Mrs. Tracy's predecessor in this, if it went back to my time that we were fooled into, by this hubris of thinking that we were just in a different category from any other councillor council and didn't see declining services, and if I miss that, I will put my hands up with that, and it may even have gone back as far as Councillor uh, 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 Mrs. Howlett or even maybe as far as Councillor Lister in, in the post. Uh, with that, my instinct is that that's not the case. My instinct is that, is that things have changed uh, more recently, but we need to get to grips with that because whichever of those two is the case, if it is we have declined where better councils out there who have talked to their uh, colleagues have not fallen into the category that we're talking about now, and that's been relatively short term, in which case we should learn that lesson in terms of the merger that we're talking about with Richmond and the speed and the scope at which we carry that out. Or it's always been there, in which case we need to go back and judge why it is that we have fallen for our own propaganda. Those who remember Simon Haywood, who was Mr. Buss's uh, predecessor as Director of Finance, when we got our third or fourth four-star incomprehensive performance assessment, uh, saying to the Cabinet, just remember, this says nothing at all about whether we're a good council. It simply says we're a council that's very good at doing CPA. I think there was a lot of wisdom in that, looking back, and we should say that. So, in conclusion, Mr. Mayor, at the very least, we need to seriously put together a strategy for a risk register, certainly, but also a strategy for reputational management, because I think we may be on the cliff edge. People can very quickly change their mind about organisations, and Wandsworth is not a bad council. Of course it isn't. But one or two examples like this might change our uh, response out there. And I really would, and I know this will fall on deaf ears, but involve the whole of the council. There are some of us on, on the opposition benches who've been around a while who want to see this place succeed. Uh, uh, you may continue to exclude us from, from scrutiny and the like. You have absolutely that power, and I recognize that may be what you choose to do. But I think in doing so, recognize that at the end of the day, funnily enough, the, the people who may take this in the neck are the ruling administration. Councillor Carpenter. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I want to uh, talk about the broader implications for joint working with, with Richmond, which the pending Ofsted report is likely to bring up. Madam Mayor, I have over 40 years' experience in managing businesses. In that time, I've worked in organizations which are vertically integrated, horizontally integrated, matrix managed, and any number of variants. In that time, I have found that while management structures can help you or hinder you in achieving your goals, whether you achieve them depends more on whether you have the right strategy and the will to implement it. It is in this spirit that I look at the proposed joint staffing arrangements with Richmond Council. Before we embarked on the arrangement with Richmond, we had created two mega directorates in Wandsworth housing and community services, and education and social services. The initial proposals for joint working with Richmond divorced housing from community services. Today, we consider a proposed divorce of education and children's services from adult social services as a result of criticisms in a forthcoming offset report. It would be nice if someone would admit that creating these two mega directrics in the first place was perhaps a mistake. Let me make it clear that I am not opposed to joint working with Richmond, in principle. It's not the most natural partner for Wandsworth, and being much smaller, it is likely to benefit most from the scale economies created by joint working. While Richmond and Wandsworth together will be 50% bigger than Wandsworth, it will nearly be three times the size of Richmond. It's therefore clear to me that the proposed joint working between Richmond and Wandsworth is as far as Wandsworth is concerned, only a step on a journey, not the end of the journey itself. With that in mind, we need to develop managerial structures 
which are capable of expanding to embrace the addition of other functions from other boroughs, or indeed whole boroughs. I am concerned that the structures being developed between Wandsworth and Richmond are too hardwired and lack the flexibility to be reconfigured to accommodate the addition of other partners. Were we to find such a partner, we would not want to spend another two years in a major reorganization to accommodate them. As we have found, reorganizations take up a lot of management capacity. And over the past years, we have lost a lot of our senior you know, management capacity as first Wandsworth departments were merged and then a joint management structure was developed with Richmond. It must be a priority of the new organization to bring new blood to refresh its management capacity. While management is busy reorganizing the deck chairs on the deck of the Titanic, they can lose sight of the fact that the ship has hit an iceberg. That is what seems to have happened in the case of education and children's services. Officers were so busy working on rearranging the deck chairs that they lost sight of their day job of steering the ship away from the icebergs. Madam Mayor, let me make it very clear that I don't blame the officers for this. The joint working with Richmond was clearly a political initiative. It was the politicians who failed to give the officers the tools they required to successfully carry out the job. And it is the politicians' cool leadership that must take the blame. Once the Ofsted report is published and we can see the details, those responsible should consider their positions. Thank you. I won't say what I was going to say earlier because so much of it has been very well covered. Uh, I just want to add a few personal bits and pieces. Um, one thing Councillor Grimston don't, I don't think mentioned in his otherwise uh, very good speech was also the loss of thousands and thousands, and I mean that's probably right, years of experience of how Wandsworth runs and how its services run. Uh, anyone who's been here more than five minutes and knows the number of uh, senior officers and middle tier officers that have gone and some of us may argue that there were too many middle tier anyway but so many in such a short period uh, seems like uh, pushing it a little bit. Um, one also might argue about whether social services and education being the two largest uh, departments in that sense with s s rather different disciplines social service inspectorates and Ofsted inspectorates uh, was a natural mix. Anyway, that, who knows, but it looks as though we're having to unscramble that particular um, situation. I just want to add a couple of other pieces. I, mean, I think we shouldn't lose sight of the government in all this. Um, I personally got no criticism of the officers either. Indeed, I have a sidetrack there. I think I was involved in the appointment of um, the officer who uh, seems to uh, have left. I'm not, not totally sure about this. And I, I was. And um, struck me then to be a very committed, personable, um, and competent, though obviously inexperienced officer. Um, and I think uh, she suffered, uh, perhaps, uh, having taken over fairly recently, um, uh, very bad timing, and perhaps not too much else. Uh, so I'm not sure I'd blame her. Um, and, and not in the game of, name, game of blaming any of the officers, but certainly uh, not her. However, I think there are two things outside our immediate scope which can't avoid blame. And one is Ofsted. Um, not because it found against us, and I'm kicking it about that, but it's the second Ofsted report very recently where the officers have said, well, all the criteria changed, and we weren't very clear about how it had changed. And I get the impression, without being an expert on it, that that's happened in many parts of the country. Um, I think Councillor Tracy might say in a minute um, that lots of other education departments have been similarly affected. 
In which case, either uh, the politicians in charge of Ofsted are changing the rules of the game and failing to inform us, the people on the ground having to do it, or um, Ofsted's out of political control. One way or another, I think there's an issue for the council to take up in a political sense, and perhaps not the only council, about the way Ofsted runs. There's one other personal comment I'd make. Um, I, Ten years ago, I was a JP, and about a dozen years ago, uh, a man was being tried for uh, violence, and on the basis of the recommendations from the probation officer, the police, and various other things, other people, he was uh, given bail. And uh, the next weekend, he murdered his girlfriend, who the case was against. And my three colleagues, um, who I knew reasonably well, uh, though like any three of us, uh, were all over the newspapers the following week. And their lives made hell uh, because the newspapers not unnaturally picked on them. But they were, in fact, only carrying out the professionals' uh, recommendations and coming, as we later discovered, to the wrong conclusions. Well, in a sense, that's where we could be. Uh, Councillor Critchard was very eloquent about saying our personal and collective responsibility. Um, we are all in that position, and God forbid that uh, anything uh, bad happens here. And so far, we have no evidence that anything has. But if, we, if it did, um, we'd be culpable or could be headline stuff the next day, just like my colleagues. And really, is that fair? And I mean, in a genuine sense, again, I'm not crying over spilt milk, that's the way it is. But the government seems to me, and this I think applies to the previous, sorry, the Labour government as well, uh, continues to um, impose legal and moral responsibilities at the same time as often taking power away uh, so we can't do anything very much. So here we are with these fantastic responsibilities, but we can't even see the paper on which we're restructuring the department uh, until they choose to produce it. It seems a very queer kind of power, of responsibility without power. Uh, Madam, I, uh, I don't envy Councillor Tracy. Oh, can I just want to say one other personal thing? Um, I did say earlier that I appreciated Councillor Tracy's briefing. Um, she's made a great point of trying to insist, encourage all of us to go on safeguard. Um, there we will all do the proper thing. Most of us probably have done the proper thing. Councillor Speck did the proper thing only last night. And there we are going and taking this train, training, and yet we don't have any real responsibility for what happens as a consequence. Puts us all in a very difficult position. Madam Mayor, I'd like to make three points, if I may, a promise uh, to this council. By uh, referring to some of the things that have come out in this debate, and indeed the questions earlier on this evening on this subject. First of all, of course, all our actions must ensure protection for the children for whom we have responsibility, and that is agreed across the board in every part of this council. Two, if there are weaknesses exposed, then whoever led us here are not those to lead us out of this mess. Three, we are where we are, in part, because the merged arrangements with Richmond have placed staff in an impossible position in this council. So definitively, councillors must take full responsibility for that. And the promise I make is this. Uh, councillors in this council know very well that uh, when I can, when this council has done something good, I am quick to praise. But I am quick to criticise too, as leader of the opposition. Make no mistake, despite everything that's been said in this debate already this evening, the opposition in this council has a duty to scrutinize all processes, 
and criticise if necessary. And I promise we shall. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't um, often write a, a speech, but I have this evening. Um, I am sorry. I'm sorry that the Council is about to receive a poor report on the services delivered to some of our most vulnerable residents. The report is embargoed, as we've all discussed, until February the 16th, and the Council has not even seen it yet. As I said earlier, we are reacting to the verbal feedback that we received from um, Ofsted. So I am also sorry that the Council is being asked to make some very serious decisions without having the full details everyone would normally expect to have. I can reassure members that all the weaknesses we expect to be identified in the report can be put right. And we could have waited until the report is published before reacting, but that's not how we do things in Wandsworth. We, um, having heard the verbal feedback, had several meetings um, over Christmas and in the weeks after um, to decide exactly how we were going to tackle those aspects that uh, the Ofsted inspectors had pointed out and that also uh, arose during the inspection. I'm sure all members want to put this right as quickly as possible. Uh, we can put it right and we will. Um, unlike uh, Councillor Osborne, I have every confidence in the senior management team of Children's Services. They know exactly what needs to be done now. And, and without them, their experience, which we've heard about before, we've lost a lot of it, but their experience we do need. But it's also their determination. Um, without that, it would not be possible to make the effective changes that are necessary. The department now needs the undivided attention of the director to enact some of those changes, not just to enact the changes, but to ensure that they are sustainable. This is not a party political issue, but I would ask the whole council to support the paper to ensure these problems are corrected as quickly as possible. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have very little to add to what's already been said because we are in an extraordinary position of talking about something which, about which we don't know anything. It's a, it really is a Rumsfeldian situation in, in many ways. But could I just make two points? Uh, first of all, about the whole issue of the Richmond uh, shared services. I was very pleased to see in our discussion so far tonight that we have looked at that in general as well as the very specific issue that we're all very concerned about. And uh, I know there have been comments in the past about there not being uh, sufficient scrutiny. I'm pleased that we've continued to make those points. And we will have to see whether or not there's anything in the Ofsted report uh, that bears upon uh, the shared services of Richmond, which of course uh, those, those sorts of services, these sorts of services aren't going to be shared anyway, uh, uh, which uh, we need to reconsider about. If I could just deal with the issue of the money and the Ofsted reports, and for once, you won't hear this very often, but I entirely agree with Councillor Critchard, uh, we do have a very serious duty as corporate parents, and that's why I believe, as Councillor Tracy has said, that we can't hang around on this issue. It would be an obvious and simple response to say, well, we'll wait and see until the, the Ofsted uh, report is published, and then we'll examine it, and then we'll go away and do something about it. Well, we know from the feedback we got before Christmas that the Ofsted have identified some serious problems. We cannot hang around for another six months or uh, 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 another six weeks or a month and just do nothing about it. And that's why I think it is important we start now to put in place the funding and some restructuring to enable the work to take place. And it is already taking place. I know the director is already in a very regular communication with Ofsted, uh, requiring more information and requiring other matters from her. So that's why I think uh, that we do, we do need to take this action and that we do need to take it now. But of course, as everyone has said throughout this evening, when that report is published in February, 
It will be a public document and there will be full and proper public debate and scrutiny on its contents. And that's the way to do it, because we all know if you sweep something under the carpet, it only gets far worse. And we cannot possibly do that. Uh, Councillor Tracy said, uh, unlike Councillor Osborne, etc. Let me repeat what I said. Definitively, councillors must take full responsibility. Just to make it clear to Councillor Tracy. The mic is now on. The matter now before the Council is the reference up amendment proposed by Councillor Osborne and seconded by Councillor Daly, as set out on page 50 of the agenda concerning shared services with Richmond. Please indicate now, with a show of hand, those in favour of the amendment. And those against? That... Um, the amendment is lost 1632. And is the original paragraph adopted by the same numbers? And is the original paragraph adopted by the, is the addition is the additional is paragraph the, is the original paragraph is the original paragraph received, received with the same numbers yes there weren't exemptions no same figures yep so that's carried 1632 Yes. <coughs> Which is now carried. Yes. 16. 1632. 